Paul Whitney is the chief librarian at the Vancouver Public Library. He is the past president of the Canadian Library Association. He is the chair of the Copyright Forum, which is responsible for addressing digital copyright issues with the Government of Canada. He has taught at both University of British Columbia and Simon Fraser University. Please welcome Paul Whitney. Thank you very much, Keith. It is my pleasure to introduce uh, Don Atkins, Atkinson's book uh, th this afternoon. I'd like to start with a general observation about this short list and what it says about Canadian publishing today. Uh, I always like to quote Robert Fulford, who described the mantra of uh, Canadian publishers as being, things are bad, they're about to get worse, and then they will get truly dreadful. Um, but what we have here is, in fact, three books, three shortlisted titles coming from the three distinct branches of Canadian publishing in this country. We have representation from the large, well-established trade publisher based in Toronto. We have representation from the smaller, independent, regional publisher. And we have representation from a university press. And I think, I think the fact that these three branches of publishing in this country have, pr have produced such outstanding books really speaks well of the strength of this industry today. Uh, Donald Harland Akinson's fascinating Some Family, The Mormons and How Humanity Keeps Track of Itself is a fine example of success in academic publishing. And it's also interesting to note that Dr. Akinson has served as senior editor for uh, McGill Queen's University Press for over 25 years. His book is an example of that sweet spot for a university press where ac academic expertise and research intersect with the preoccupations of the general public. As any archivist or librarian can tell you, genealogy, or to use Dr. Akinson's phrase, how humanity keeps track of itself, is one such widely held public preoccupation. Any analysis of genealogy of necessity requires consideration of the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, or the Mormons. An examination of the church, its doctrines, and its operation are central to some family. A core tenet of the church is the baptism of the dead. Hence, the impetus for more than 25 million church members, sorry, 12 million church members, to trace their genealogies as far back as they can. The belief in baptizing the dead is controversial for many, but over more than 100 years, this practice has resulted in the creation of the world's largest facility for the storage of temperature-sensitive records, the Mountain of Names in Utah, which, in Dr. Akinson's estimate, contains the records on 2 billion people. Out of an estimated total of 102 to 106 billion people who have ever lived or currently live. Uh, this amazing infrastructure is supported by innovative digital data transmission. Akinson describes the church as a massive, if usually underestimated, cultural force. While not refraining from examining the flaws in Mormon doctrine and genealogical methodology, while critical at times, particularly in his detailed examination of the fascinating, if frequently problematic, early history of the church, Akinson is generous in his recognition of Mormon achievements in compiling their hit record of human history. He especially recognizes and praises their openness and generosity in assisting secular researchers. Not just the Mormons come in for criticism for their genealogical practice, in this regard, the book examines ranges from the annals of Irish kings to Icelandic sagas to Judaism. Akinson clearly expresses his affection for those engaged in the seemingly quixotic pursuit of documenting the human race. And why, you might ask, is this quixotic? Consider Akinson's examination of the likelihood of false paternity and maternity, adoption, incest, to say nothing of polygamy, polyandry, gay marriage, all of which can disrupt the neat family tree. These uh, considerations, let me tell you, provide for very interesting reading. Uh, in considering those compelled to trace their family tree, whether for reasons of doctrine or personal passion, Akinson is clear that these are people he likes. And this, I believe, sets him apart from many of his academic colleagues. This affection is one example of the qualities which make some family a special book. Dr. Akinson's sense of humor and non-academic turn of phrase further enliven the text. Reading the book, be prepared to be startled by some of the information conveyed. I was scratching my head and reaching for my calculator when I read that the largest number of births 
authoritatively recorded for one woman was 69. Um, were, were Dr. Akinson with us today, I would have been questioning him on how many triplets and quadruplets were included in, in, in that total. There had to be quite a number, I, I, I figure. Uh, this discussion on some family perhaps downplays the book's intellectual weight. Uh, make no mistake, this is an important contribution to Canadian scholarship written by one of our finest academics. As you may have noted in today's program, Don Akinson currently serves as Douglas Professor of Canadian and Colonial History at Queen's University. He holds two postgraduate degrees from Harvard and has received four honorary doctorates from Canadian universities. He has published over 20 books on history and five novels. His biography on Connor Cruz O'Brien won the, the Trillium Prize in Ontario. This is but one of a number of awards and shortlist recognitions received for his work. His total body of work was recognized when he was named Canada Council Most Molson Laureate in the Social Sciences and Humanities. Clearly, Dr. Akinson is an accomplished scholar and a fine writer with the ability to reach beyond the university sphere to the general reader. Some families' analysis of the various grammars of genealogical narrative is empathetic, engaging, eclectic, and thorough. It is a most deserving nominee for the British Columbia National Award for Canadian Nonfiction. I would like at this point to call on the director of the University Press of British Columbia, Peter Milroy, who is both a good friend of Don Akinson's and I think representing University Press is a most, most appropriate person to come forward and bring greetings from Don. So, Peter? <laughs> 